Hello, hello, Joanne fans. It's so good to be here. My name is Vicki Howell, and I am the host and creator of The Knit Show with Vicki Howell. And I am so thrilled to be here as I am now every month, twice a month, to show you a quick yarny thing to make. Right now our theme is gifts because tis the season and all of that. So last time I was here, we made headbands, which are great gifts for friends, teachers, whatever. And if you'd love to still get that project, it's available on the Joanne blog. You can watch the video. You can go through the Joanne Facebook page videos, or you can just head over to the YouTube channel, The Knit Show with Vicki Howell. I have a whole Joanne playlist, so you can find that. So hello, hello everyone. Oh, I'm actually seeing comments this time. That's the first time since I've been on the Joanne website. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Sherry. Um, so what we're going to do today is... We are going to talk holiday parties. This is the time where you get invited to 11 holiday party, holiday parties. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's, you know, to celebrate Hanukkah or Yule or Christmas or New Year's or really just in general a hangout. It's always a good idea to show up with something in your hands, right? And if it can be a bottle of bubbly, even better. Now, if you don't drink, you could do sparkling cider or whatever. This happens to be um, Prosecco. I'm almost positive this is Prosecco. But you could do wine. You could do, you know, anything that comes in a bottle, basically. And what I love is, you know, it's really easy to just gro go to the store and grab a bottle. But to make it really seem special and not just get lost on the table full of all the other bottles that the other guests make, it's really nice to sort of wrap it, but with re reusable wrapping. So... I have created a cozy, a little sweater that you can just slide right over any bottle so it is reusable, it's sweet, it totally goes with um, the really popular Heige, um trend right now, which is just very like, it's a Norwegian like coziness, you know, and it's just, you know, it's just fun. So I'm going to show you how to do this. This is a great intro to lace project. I feel like it's getting blown out a little here, but you can see there is, this is project is called Suede. Maybe because if you have a little bubbly, you might be swaying, but also this is called a Suede Lace Pattern. So really what we're gonna cover is two different uh, decreases. So a left slant and a right slant decrease, which is really important for lace making. Yarn overs, that's really all lace is, is, is decreasing and increasing, but creating eyelets or holes. And that's almost always done through yarn overs. And then we will talk about binding off in pattern stitch. Now, I'm going to talk about rib stitch, but I'll also tell you how you can apply that to any time that a pattern says bind off in pattern stitch. So first off, before I get started, I want to show you the supplies that you're going to need. Now, this is going to be backwards because of the front-facing camera, but I will flip it and you'll be able to read it. You're going to need one ball of buttercream alpaca solid. This is a really soft, fluffy, lovely yarn. It's exclusively at Joanne. You can get it in really any color. I chose to go with their um, cream because I thought that it could be used all the way through winter. It doesn't just have to be Christmas if that's what you're celebrating. Um, just as long as there is a chill in the air, you can give that. So one ball of that, and you should be able to get two cozies. So um, a great deal. You also need size... 15, which is 10 millimeter if you're out of the U.S., knitting needles. Now, you can use straights. This project is knit flat. I just prefer circular, circular needles at all times because the weight of the project sits on your lap or the table instead of you having to hold it all on your wrists. And I'm a knitter, so I have wrist problems sometimes, right? Okay, so you need that. You'll need some type of large-eyed tapestry needle, just any tapestry needle, but since we're using really chunky yarn, you just want to make sure it has a big enough um, hole to feed it in, and then a piece of ribbon. I love velvet ribbon or velveteen ribbon, but, you know, go into the notions or the ribbon aisle at Joanne, and you could really use any kind of trimming, as long as it was narrow enough to fit through the holes, but the holes are pretty big, so I think you're good. And that is all there is to it. Again, thank you, everybody. I see you. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Tina. If you enjoy this or know anybody that you think might be really interested in making a wine or champagne bottle cozy, please share this video either live or after it's recorded. Um, that really helps us out. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to flip the camera. So when you are teaching knitting, it can be frustrating to, uh, to viewers if it is not from the perspective of the knitter, which is me. What that means is, is that I have to flip the camera and it's sometimes a little ugly and you may see some of my dirty, 
um, office. So talk amongst yourself. I'd love to know what you're making um, as part of holiday gifts, host gifts especially. Are you doing ornaments? Are you doing cozies like this? Um, what What would you like to see in the future? Because I have one more video before Christmas where I could show you something else to give to hosts or as gifts. So please type it on in there and I will go after this video and dive on in and answer any questions that you have that I missed today. All right, you talk. I'm going to flip. So now we're at our perspective. All right, so the pattern for this is on the Creative Spark Joanne blog and I will post I pretty much guarantee they've already posted it, but if not, I will go and post a link to that after. All right, so I've already cast on 22 stitches as the pattern calls for. I've worked the first couple of rows just so, that, so there would be some body. It does not matter what method you use to cast on, um, so just whatever makes you happy. Again, I'm using the circular needles only because it's my preference. Flat or straight needles are fine. This piece is knit flat. Uh, Carol, no, this is this is not a hard project. This is a great quick project for more experienced knitters or introductory to lace uh, knitting for newer knitters. All right, so we are in this pattern because we're working on a, as I said before, oh, Joanne's, there you go. Uh, Joanne just posted the link in the comment section for this pattern. You can see how this is a series of swaying eyelets. So what that means is, one, it's just you're creating eyelets at different intervals, but two, you're creating them using a series of either left slanting or right slanting decreases. So those are the things that I'm going to show you. Kathy, I know it's great chunky yarn. It's buttercream alpaca solid that you can get at Joanne. Okay, so I happen to be on the third row of the pattern, but the first half of this pattern is all worked with the same repeat, just with uh, just started at different intervals. So really what I just want you to see is how to do the yarn over and the knit two together. So I'm knitting one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to knit two together. So we insert our needle through two stitches as if and then knit them together as if they were one that is a knit two together then we, so that's decreased but we don't want to actually lose any stitch number we want to yarn over so all that means is wrapping their yarn over the needle and then we want to knit two together or i'm sorry just knit two so that's the stitch pattern is knit two together yarn over knit two you can see already there's that hole and because I started it at a different interval than the row below or two rows below, which will be noted in the pattern. Again, it's pinned to the top of the comment sections here. Um, unless you're watching it on YouTube later, and then I will post a link in the description. Okay, you can see that they're sort of staggered or swayed, as it were. So then you're going to just continue that. So I'm knitting two together. And if you can see, this is a right, a knit two together is a right slanting decrease, which means you see this stitch over here, it's pointing this direction. So it does actually matter what decrease you use. Okay, yarn over, knit two together. Okay, and so you're just going to continue in that manner. I'm going to show you one more time because, you know, we're here. Knit two together, yarn over, knit two as the pattern calls for, and then every wrong side row, you are going to just purl back. So just every row, no matter what. Okay, you're going to continue in that manner and it'll stagger as the pattern calls for. And that goes all the way through the first six rows. So I've worked the first six rows because now what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to create the left slanting decrease. So you can see what it looks like as it starts to appear. You can see that it's all sort of swaying to the right. Well, now we got to work on our sway to the left. So to do that, for this particular row, it says to knit one first. We are going to, now before we did our decrease, for, our decrease first and then our increase, our yarn over second, for this half, we are going to be doing our increase first and then the decrease. That's part of what will create the sway in the pattern. So we need to yarn over first, 
And then we're going to do what's called a SSK, which stands for slip, slip, knit. Now, normally in a pattern, if it says to slip a stitch, you always slip purlwise. SSK is the exception to the rule. You're going to slip one knitwise, slip the second stitch knitwise, and then you insert the needle and you knit it through the back loop. And you can see the top stitch, which is the one that you look at, is now leaning to the left. And that is a left leaning decrease. All right, let's try it. Oh, and then we need to knit two stitches. Okay, let me show you again. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit the stitch, knit two. And, I'm, and you just continue to go that manner. Since I showed you three before, I'll show you three on this way too. So, whoops, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Okay, and then you're going to continue in that manner. And it, in that manner, <laughs> that was me saying matter and pattern at the same time. It was a portmanteau, if you will. So you're going to continue as the pattern calls for. It's a 12 row repeat that just utilizes those two skills I just gave you. Um, and then you'll repeat it for as, as many repetitions as the pattern calls for. All right, so I've worked just sort of a mini swatch. This is not the full size, obviously, of what your cozy will look like. But what I wanted to talk about now is often patterns call for, uh, they call for you to bind off and pattern stitch. So what does that mean and is it necessary? Well, it'll help it, it'll help your edging not to just sort of be unsightly. Sometimes it means that it won't stretch too much. Sometimes it, me it will mean the opposite, that it won't be too stretchy. So when, when we're working in rib, I've already bound off. So the rib portion is what the top bottle, the top that accommodates the shape of the bottle happens. And just as a side note, we start with 22 stitches. I have a row in there to decrease that'll take it down to 20 stitches. Whenever you're working in the round or working in the circular, so this is a flat piece, but it will be seamed together, you want to make sure if you're working in knit two, purl two rib, that you have multiples of four. Otherwise, it won't, your pattern will get interrupted when you seam it together. All right. So I thought I would show you what it means to bind off in, in this case, knit to purl to rib. But in any case, it's the same thing. All you need to do is read your stitches. So whatever the stitch says for ribbing, this says it's a knit stitch. We can tell that because there's no bump. This is a purl stitch because there is a bump. For ribbing, you want to, you want to work the next stitch exactly as the rib stitch has. Um, or excuse me, as the knit stitch shows. Now, if you were working in a different stitch pattern, you would just bind off using the instructions for whatever row in that pattern you were binding off. So we have got, I have one stitch worked over here. I've already bound off most of it. So now I see I need to knit one and then slip the stitch over, let it drop off. The next stitch is also a knit stitch bind off, but the next stitch is a purl. So I want to purl that next stitch, bind it off. The last stitch is also a purl, you bind that off. And that's all there is to it. You just read the stitches and you can see because of that, the integrity of the ribbing really stayed. Whereas if I had knit every stitches, the pearls, the size of a knit stitch is a little bit different. The integrity is a little bit different. It probably would have sort of had this weird waviness to it. All right, once you're done, what you want to do is you want to cut a tail that's long enough to seam. So I always say about two to three times the length of your piece. Now, again, this is just a mini swatch. Yours will be 12 inches in height. So I would do at least 24 inches, if not 36 in yarn. You're going to cut it. I just got one of my little snowflake sequin in there. And you're going to pull that through. Now, while we're here, I might as well talk seaming. So because this is really like mushy, gushy, lovely yarn, you can kind of seam any way you want. Just so whip stitch would be fine. It really probably won't show. 
But what you want to do, with the right side showing, is you want to make sure the edges match up. And then what I like to do is I like to go in about one more, and we're going to be doing what's called mattress stitch, or I've chosen to go that route. It, you know, like I said, you, you do you, it won't really matter with this yarn. So what that means is I find the little bar portion, the latter portion of the knit stitch, and I'm going to go under that one on one side. Then I'm going to zigzag over here. And because this is a purl stitch on this side, it's going to look a little different. You just need a purl bump on this side. And do the same thing. And you just continue all the way down. So I go to the next ladder. Cross over. To the next and you would just continue that until you're done and then weave in ends as you would for any other project then at the end you want to take your ribbon and just weave it in you don't even have to make any separate holes just the last round of eyelets you just weave it in and out and tie it and that's really really all there is to it. Carla, I see that you have a hard time finding the blog. Sometimes I think it's on their mobile app that makes it difficult. If you Google Joanne blog or Joanne blog suede, the pattern will come right up. But if you can see in the comment section, you can find that they have pinned the pattern to the top. Okay, I'm going to flip back around. Sorry, guys, I had a little technical difficulty there. All right. I thought I, I thought I hung up on you. The accidental hang up is the worst. All right, so um, that's all there is to it. Really, really sweet. It slides over. It fits any traditional wine bottle or champagne bottle, Prosecco, you do, you, you know, apple cider. Uh, very sweet, cozy. It's totally gonna show up um, either if you sit it under a Christmas tree or you put it on a holiday table. So sweet and easy. And it, it only takes about maybe two hours to make three, you know, if you're new, maybe three. So it's definitely something that you could watch while you were binge watching something like, I don't know, maybe the knit show with Vicki Hell on YouTube. Um, and while you are there, while you are on YouTube, please check former videos I've done for Joanne. You can see the Joanne uh, playlist that is on that YouTube channel as well. And I always have the links to where you can find the patterns. The last thing, the last thing I wanted to tell you about is... I don't know if you missed it or not, but courtesy of Joanne, I was on the Hallmark Channel's Home and Family uh, just just a few, just days ago. But they've actually put up the piece online, and I will put a link to it. And this is made using a uh, big twist yarn. It's their I'm spacing. Oh, the, their natural blend yarn, and I really really like it. I've used it for a lot of projects this holidays. But this is an intro to macrame project. It's really cute. It's a little Santa hang hanging thing. I have directions, step-by-step um, uh, -step directions, but there's also a video. Really fun. This macrame hoop also from Joann's. Actually, everything that I use to make it is. So if you want to check that out, I'll also include a link. Of course, there are a gazillion Joanne, handmade Joanne um, holiday gift ideas. So just go through their uh, their blog and their videos and check them out. I know my friend uh, Cara Witten also blogs and creates some amazing things. She just did a whole gift drop thing. So please check it out and come back here in a couple of weeks to see me again. And I think we're going to do another quick gifty idea or maybe another host gift. But if there's something you'd specifically like me to teach and make, please put it in the comments and we will absolutely consider it. Thank you so much for watching and for spending some of your very busy day with me. I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to make these holidays handmade. Bye.